I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. Hello, all you beautiful motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the PhD Show. Joining me today is actually another engineer, mm-hmm. Neela. Neela Moon. Neela Moon. And I remembered it, and I pronounced it properly. Exactly right. It's kind of like The Lion King, but that's Nayla. Is it Nayla? Nyla. I've never actually seen the full thing, so... You've never seen The Lion King? No. <laughs> Where have you been living? India. India? Yeah, There's no I... excuse. Yo, they have Lion King in India. Well, I mean, our TVs weren't that developed. Okay, let's take that big thing off the table, though. That big fucking juice thing. Herbal iced tea. Does that is that infused with some sort of alcoholic beverage? Oh no, the alcohol is already in my body uh, from the couple so hours. So you're ready. Ago. You're ready for this podcast. Yeah, I guess. Good, because I, I don't have any alcohol. Well. I'm doing sober October. Oh really? Yes, I have not smoked weed in. It's been six days. How's that going? Well, to be honest, I had. A couple nights of cold sweats. I didn't realize weed could do that to you. But when yeah. you're a weedaholic, Hits that you. shit's for real. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, I feel like with any substance, you know, like coffee even. when you're See, I stopped coffee. Yeah. This is tea. And I did not buy this from Starbucks because Starbucks sucks. <laughs> Somebody just gave me the cup. Yeah. And it's actually red rose tea. It's very, very gay tea. Honestly, I've drank tea most of my life, but like... Once I switched over to coffee, it was very nice. I found I found I had a lot more energy, which I guess. Bring that mic down and closer to your mouth. Oh, like that. Yeah. Beautiful. I also want them to see your face. You know, oh. You're hiding with a hat and like very ig- incognito over there. It's okay. That's why I'm wearing the bright blue shirt. Yeah, just the red. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, blue and pretty. red. Those are my colors. Right. Yeah, coffee. Well, I was addicted to coffee. I'd have about 10 cups of coffee a day. Jeez. I literally ruined my gut because of it. So now I'm taking these gut enzymes. Mm -hmm. It's um, bull bile or something like that. Bull bile. It's the bile bile from... Bulls? A bull. How does that help? So it has gut enzymes in it. And what happens when you have a slow gallbladder... It, you have um, the liver processes and sends all the bile into the gallbladder. Okay. And, or is it the other way around? Anyways, one of them does that. And if it doesn't do it properly, it, it leaks and then you can't absorb nu- nutrition properly. So then oh. you become anemic and all that other shit. Okay. Yeah. Huh. I never knew that. But yeah, no, like, it's, um, like, with coffee and all that, you really do have to, like, you know, kind of find your limit on it. Because the only thing I find is that, like, when you're always drinking some sort of caffeine or even, like, anything often, like, any sort of substance, like, you can't kind of, like, depend on it, right? Because then if you stop for a little bit, you're just going to be like, well, that's not normal. Yeah, well, my mother always said everything in moderation. Exactly. Moderation is key. With anything. Yes. And you should know that little Indian boy. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I'm a little Indian. Really? Yeah, my grandmother. Where's she from? From Mauritius. Where? From Mauritius. Do you know where that is? It's in the Indian Ocean next to Madagascar. Yeah, most people don't know this. This is just a little speck in the Indian Ocean. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm actually from... um. The southern part of India. So it's called this little state called Kerala, like all the way down at the tip. And like I was born there and then I came here when I was about like four or five years old. So can you do the accent? Or can you do the... The head (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I guess I can. But um, I actually speak my mother tongue. Okay. Yeah, so... Which is what? um, It's a dialect of Tamil called Malayalam. Okay, say something. Um, madam. What is that? That means tree. Tree. Okay, give me a sentence, tree. y'all. I didn't say a word. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
നമുക്ക് ഈ പൈസ പോയെടുക്കാം Bitch, you know what's crazy? I actually no don't know a lot of swear words. See, in Afrikaans, I know the swear words. Really? Yeah. Can you teach me some? How do you say it? Yamasapos? Yamasapos is one of the worst things you could say. What does that mean? Like your, mother's pu- your mother's vagina, your mother's pussy. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, yeah, I'm Yamasapos. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Peel. Peel. Means dick. Yamasapos. Peel. Nai is fuck. Nai. So you must have put P.O. Nai. I'm going to put those to good use. Yeah, put those <laughs> to good use. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, the next song I'm putting out is called Mutt. Okay. And it's in half Afrikaans, half English. I think I'm, I'm going to put some French in there because in South Africa, <clears throat> French is yeah. the main, mm-hmm. main language. And same with Canada, yeah. French is the second language. So I thought it would be cool to kind of infuse all infuse those right. the three of them that's actually really sick so we'll see how that goes huh what genre is the song hip-hop yeah hip-hop I, yeah. i love hip-hop i've always loved hip-hop actually I, i've been meaning to ask you so like do you mainly make hip-hop because i saw that one song on your instagram it was more i don't know it was like which vibey. one is that <sighs> you said Kane was in the lyrics of one of them. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what kind of music you would call that. That one's actually about the scriptures. Yeah. Um, that one's called The End. The End. Yeah, that's what it was. The End. And that one's actually about um, the lengths that we will go to to possess material objects. Oh, okay. And what, what parts of our moral being we're willing to give up or... lose and not even realize it from material objects from material objects or power or to gain something hmm. and also at the end of the day sorry if i keep kicking you at the end of the day when you go into your home or you're riding your car and you're living to pay for these things yeah who actually owns you at the end of the day is it you that owns you or is there some other force that's driving you that we because we're in this machine this go 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 world yeah. we can't we don't have that moment to stop and be like who's making this decision for me am i making this decision is society making this decision somebody mm-hmm. else making this for me i feel like when you really stop and think about all that stuff that's when you kind of think about life in a certain way where you're like you know there's all these things that you consider normal and then it just doesn't make sense you yeah know? or doesn't fit i have a lot of friends who and myself included if i work for i've tried to have a regular job mm-hmm. you know 9 to 5 i have um but when i was younger in school and i just it there's this thing where we think that there's something wrong with us if we're not happy yeah if we're not content living in this system or society that's built that's already built an infrastructure that's already built and who's to say that that's what hum- how humans should be living mm-hmm. if the mo- if most of us are depressed there's obviously something wrong with the system in which we live in yeah no that definitely makes sense because a lot of the people that i know and like I'd say like a good amount of them they you know like I'd be having conversations with them you know just like you and I would be having just about life and all this and you know they'd always tell me like you know I wish I did this I really want to do this I really want to do that and the one question after them is why aren't you doing it right and I get that you know a lot of people do have obligations and responsibilities that they do have to tend to right so I get that but you know there's like a one two hours in the day that you could always put aside or just work on something that you like you know it could be literally what is anything that? I w- what is that element within a person that stops them from doing i guess their whole life they've been told what to do is that what it is or is it a fear or does it depend on the on the individual is it a fear 
I guess it could be a fear a of change? change and not knowing what would happen. Because I find with my experience that the best things that have ever happened to me have been when I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? That actually brings up a really good point. I find that the only way to keep moving forward in life is to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. But that'll never happen. The moment you're comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh, I guess it is a paradox in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That sounded a lot better more, in your head. Exactly. <laughs> a lot more profound <laughs> in your head. <laughs> but no, if you really do sit down and think about it, if you're okay, comfortable would be the not right, not the right word, but like I know what you're saying. Yeah, I throw you know? myself into a lot of situations where I'm uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and so like, I guess I'm I have become used to like normalized to that feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I guess comfortable with being uncomfortable, but like used to being in those situations to where you're kind of seeking it out, right? Because you know that it will bring change and something new into your life. Yes, and right? the the unknown is very intriguing to me yeah yeah no i know it's uh that's why i love space you know when i was a kid i actually wanted to be an astronaut me too man me fucking too that would have been the Yo, sick neil degrasse tyson as much as he annoys the shit out of me why does he annoy you he's kind of pretentious you mm. know yeah. oh you know what i saw this one video of him where he was saying that he never puts a case on his phone and he was just literally oh, flipping. You saw fuck, that, right? I saw that. Yeah. And I every time I I, <laughs> I think I touch my iPhone, I'm like, he's so fucking right. And you know what? I did it for a month where I didn't have a case. I have a tempered glass all over this fucking thing. Yeah. And I get what he's saying because of the design. Now, I love architecture mm -hmm. and I appreciate design, good design. The iPhone is designed... It's a beautiful phone. It's a beautiful phone. Mm -hmm. And to put a case over it, it's, Kinda ruins it's it. like putting a plastic coating over a Picasso painting. Yeah. Not saying Apple is like well, Picasso, I, I, <laughs> but... Well, it's, it's a pretty phone. It's a pretty phone, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. But I get what you mean, though. Like... That's so funny you brought that up because <laughs> I was just thinking about that the other day. No, because like when I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, you know, smart ass dude knows a lot about space and then that phone video. Yeah. That's it's, pretty that's much stuck the into extent my head. of my knowledge. On Joe Rogan, right? It was on Joe it Rogan. Was, yeah, it was on Joe Rogan, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Do you, have you ever watched or heard of Tim Dillon? Okay, so he's another podcaster. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's like a a homosexual straight guy. So he's bi. No, no, no. He's full out gay, but he's one of those great gays that you would never know is gay. Oh, okay. You know, he doesn't have to do that whole it's not lisp like shit. Flamboyant like that, right? He's just normal. Okay. He's just a normal dude, but he's fucking hilarious. You've got to check out his podcast. Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon. Tim he's Dillon. A comedian. Hmm. But yeah, you know that's also another thing I realized about. You know people and you know their sexuality and all that like it is such a wide range right so you can have people that you know seem one way or another but you know they're actually this one you can have people that are exactly what you might think they are so like when it comes to life like that i'm like you know you never know what a person really is for sure i mean most people think i'm bi or i like to eat pussy and i love dick <laughs> never would have guessed <laughs> You know why? Because I have no judgment towards people. Towards Let me that. guess, you don't see color. You can definitely see it, but just um, putting each person in a box based on those things, right? Like, yeah. definitely you can see color. Definitely you can see what color does and, like, you know, how the world works in that sense. And, ba and sexuality, too, you know? Like, well, there's you can't definitely be to those things. A, a reason we put people in boxes. Yeah. Just for our own mm -hmm. way of, of thinking, thinking and, yeah and, and i mean it's moving. definitely human nature to like kind of see patterns and do all this but i don't know people really tend to surprise me in good and bad ways for sure but right. i think people surprise you when you have expectations of people yeah you know what that makes a lot of sense 
If you have Jeez. zero expectations, you'll never be surprised huh. or disappointed. It's kind of a boring life to live. <laughs> it's a very Buddhist way of living. You know what? Maybe one day I'll reach that level of enlightenment. Not yet. I mean, you are Indian. This episode of the PhD show is brought to you by my broke ass. If you like the show, if you like the music, go to FallonDunn.com, subscribe, follow. We're always giving away free gifties to show our love, appreciation for y'all. Because without you, my ass would still be fucking broke. So subscribe, FallonDunn.com. Uh, do you like get random moments where you're like, oh shit, why yes. do I know this fact? I was like, wow, how do I know this? And you're like, oh shit, you know, I was an expert on this when I was 13. Yeah. 13. <laughs> <laughs> now that happens, honestly. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of useless information in my head where it just comes out sometimes and I'm like, geez, I didn't know I knew that, but that's pretty cool. I'm going to tell someone one day. <laughs> tell somebody one day. I mean, let me actually think of one. Um, just some random facts. A random fact. Did you know that in the seahorse species, the males actually give birth? I do know that. Oh, jeez. They carry the eggs. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the videos of them just like psh, spreading them out? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty wild. It is. I know a lot of useless information too like that. Yeah. Yeah, National Geographic was my go-to mm-hmm. when I was a kid. So you just woke up. Mm-hmm. And it's 20 after 12. Yeah. Well, I mean, I woke up half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. But you have a reason. Yeah. Because you're doing a session. What, what yeah, I was on? um working on, honestly, just playing around with some stuff. Because uh, I had a session yesterday up until 1230. And then I had some of my friends come over and they did a session from 2 to around 6 30 ish and then i was just working on some stuff after um yeah literally just because um i feel like you need to have sessions where you're not really trying to make anything objectively you're just like playing around with things right and yeah isn't that just playing around i guess yeah yeah just playing around <laughs> just diddling yeah so we were doing that and then i have a session coming up soon within the next hour and then i have a session at five and after that i'm a free man did you go for go to school for engineering i actually um i didn't no um i started off you know just producing learning how to make beats this and that um just went through different softwares and i ended up well actually technically i guess i did go to school i took this three-day program it's called um abstract learning and there are these dumb two people that have been engineering for like a long time shout out to ante and mega and um yeah so they kind of taught me the ropes in terms of like mixing on pro tools how to use melodyne this and that and i've kind of been you know i guess like interning with them for like maybe a year or so on and off and then they ended up getting me this job at the studio next door and yeah ever since then i've just been recording you know mixing and just doing my thing but going back to your original question i didn't really go to like school school yeah when did you get into engineering into engineering professionally i guess maybe it's like less than six months ago not professionally just oh just like that um as an interest well I guess you could say, like, once I got tired of just making beats all the time and I wanted to start recording, that would be about a year and a half, two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So okay, I'm still so you're kind fresh, of new. You're fresh. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you still got love for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're I don't not wanna... tainted by the fucking industry yet. Yeah, no, I honestly love what I'm doing right now. But I, I do get, you know, little bits of um, terribleness from certain clients but oh we're always gonna get that holy shit i've had my fair share of crazy motherfucking clients yeah honestly like at that point you can just kind of mentally check out and like you just kind of see it as a job right because 
not everything can be like 100 percent of the time just you know amazing and good you know you kind of have to like just get grind. through those yeah literally yeah, yeah so like to think just, that you can go through life without a grind in anything even mm-hmm. if it's something that you love to do yeah so yeah during those like you really can't pay too much mind to it or let it get to you just kind of have to stay on the outside of it but those are good tests and, mm-hmm, i think the biggest one of the biggest tests i had i had this in my last studio yeah. um, a few years ago there was this i so i'm a workaholic and but even more so a few years ago yeah i would do such like 48 i would just work 48 hours straight without any sleep and then there's this it got to 48 or just over 48 and another session another client came in it was just session after session mm-hmm. and this new new client came in and i literally looked at the board i looked at everything i'm like i don't even know what i'm doing <laughs> Just, I fucking burnt the fuck out. Jesus Christ, and then I went outside. I bawled my fucking eyes out. And then I came back inside. I said, I'm going to have to reschedule. Because I've just... You just can't. Yeah. I've browned out, yo. I mean, yo, like... Not to be racist. No, no. Okay, <laughs> I, I know what you meant. But, um, yeah, it's... uh, You really do have to kind of gauge yourself in terms of that. Like, if I know that i need to take a day off you know i'll try my best to take a day off because when you kind of you know transfer into that mindset of like you're coming here every day and you're just like doing something you don't want to do then why are you still doing it right because the whole reason you got into music is because you did not want to follow that you know like i guess normal lifestyle of just going to a job to a nine to five and just doing something you don't like so if you're not happy with something that you're supposed to like, then what the heck are you really doing? I think the key is to have, to do multiple things that you enjoy. If For me, if I only do one thing that I like, I get really depressed. Mm-hmm. And then I end up hating that thing. Yeah. So I have to do multiple things that I enjoy. So what else do you do other than music and stuff? Um, well, I do the podcast. Um, I do advertising for people photography i shoot music videos for other people and myself that's really cool yeah and um i love i love running and training i have a personal trainer actually i just came from there that's why i'm so wired right now oh okay i just (laughs) literally came from there had a shower and just came straight from the podcast yeah but i think also physical exercise i think is a key to Mm -hmm. keep keep doing what you're doing yeah if you don't have that then yeah no i definitely need to get on top of that i used to work out a little bit back in like high school but like geez i am very out of shape <laughs> cardio barely i think the stairs coming up to the studio is probably you mean those stairs the, yeah that, the, that flight of stairs that that's yeah. the extent of my cardio every day <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i kind of gotta you know get on top of that and um yeah, but I know what you mean, though. Like, exercise really does help you focus more on what you need to focus on and just keeps you, you know. It does. I love running. There's something about running. I I know it's going to sound so fucked up, but when I'm running, I, like, harness all of my anger and anything, anytime anybody has ever said I couldn't do something or or put me down in any way i just like motherfuckers and i just go i just go another kilometer and another kilometer and well i mean it's an outlet right hmm? it's it an outlet definitely it's an outlet and it's really good to have multiple different outlets so what know. else do you do shit um other than music mm-hmm. recently not other than much. masturbating well i mean that's a given um, other than masturbating and music and yeah, yeah, masturbation and music. That's it. The two big M's. <laughs> two big M's. Yes. <laughs> Love that. But yeah, no. Um I used to take photos here and there back when I was younger, but haven't really had much of the chance for that now. But you know, I take a look at those photos on my iPhone and stuff. Yeah. You know, when I see something cool. Hey, the camera's on the phones now. They're actually getting pretty really well. Good. Yeah. So yeah, 
Um, I like hanging out with like my little sister when I get the chance because I barely get to see her now that I'm, you know, always out. She? she is. Mm-mm. You took too long there. You took way too long there. 13, 12, 13, going to grade eight, in grade eight right now. Okay, so 13. Yeah, 13, exactly. She's 13 years old. Um, yeah, no, it's crazy because like in my head, she's still this like little five-year-old. But then, you know, like when I go home and I see her, I'm like, what the heck? You're almost like my height. And like she's on the computer. I think she's playing some sort of game. And then she's like, oh, I'm just, you know, doing homework and writing emails and stuff. I'm like, what? She's, she's a grown little thing. I know. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually so proud of her. But Aww. yeah. Is she your only sibling? Yeah, she's my only sibling. She's my little sister. But yeah, I was an only child most of my life. And then, you know, she came and along. And she popped up? She popped up. Your parents got freaky deaky? And she popped up? I guess so. They got freaky deaky around 2007. I guess, yeah. And then that was it. That was it, yeah. <laughs> and after that, they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Wrap that shit up. Exactly. You know what? They had me. They're like, shit. We did something wrong. They tried it again. They're like, ah, had enough. And then. That was it. Hey. But you know what? To be fair, my parents did give me a really good life considering all things. Ooh. Like as a kid and during my earlier teenage years, I couldn't really see that, right? But I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. You know, I didn't know where this was going. I didn't know where it would take me. And neither did they. And that was a very scary thing for them, right? Um, but now that I've kind of have a job and like an income coming in, from doing music it's a bit more secure but even still you never know what's gonna happen yeah i had a little bit of of that guilt too actually Mm -hmm. um i i grew up with my mom single mother i mean most of the time i grew up with my mom she raised me and my sister on her own and yeah i had a lot of guilt where i thought that i should make a lot of money and take Mm. care of her yeah I still feel that way. I mean, you can't ever stop that, really. Yeah, that's a that sounds like a, a good good point to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what? This actually really woke me up. I'm a lot less hungover. I feel a lot less nauseous, and I am ready for my sessions. Awesome. <laughs> so come on. Say no more. I'm a I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a I'm a fat boss.